Hello, I'm Adrian, and in this video lesson tutorial, I'm going to be looking at Shake Some Action by the Flaming Groovies. And uh, that's the title track from this album here from uh, 1976. And I don't actually know that much about the Flaming Groovies other than uh, having this album and, and really liking it. But I believe they're an American band, although on this particular album cover, they're looking quite mod and uh, British. And I think uh, Shake Some Action is, is certainly one of their better known tracks. And uh, what prompted me to do this lesson, I actually got a request from somebody asking if I could take a look at this song, but I've been toying with the idea of, of looking at it for a while. And uh, I do love getting song requests from people. My stock response is that, uh, um, although it may, may not always seem like it, these videos do take quite a long time to put together. And uh, I usually can't promise that I'll be able to look at a specific song. But um, in this case, I was right in the mood to take a look at Shake Some Action. So uh, as usual, I'm going to go into the song in some detail. There's some great rhythm guitar stuff. There's a nice little solo as well. So uh, let's get to it. Introduction then, and I really love the intro to this song. And it, it took me a little while to get to the bottom of exactly what was going on there. But I think I've just about cracked it. And the whole thing is based around triad shapes played on the top three strings. We, we need three triad shapes here. We need an A, a B minor, and a G. And we're just cycling through those sounds. So let's start with the A triad. And that goes like this. We've got the notes A, C sharp, and E. I'm playing the second fret on the G string, second fret on the B string, and an open top string. I'm fretting that with my first finger and then I'm just bending it upwards to allow the, the high E to ring as well. Um, you, you could do that some, some other way, but that's just what seems to work best for me. So we've got an A triad, then we're going to a B minor triad, which is just B, D, F sharp. That's the fourth fret on the G, third fret on the B, and then the F sharp is the second fret on the top string. And then we're going to a G triad, which is B, D, and G. That's the fourth fret, third fret, and the third fret. I'm just kind of using my third finger and bringing up my first finger to, to play that. You'll, you'll, you'll see why that, that, that works when we, we put the whole part together. So, so essentially what's going on here is, is we've got A, B minor, G, B minor, A, B minor, G, B minor. I'm just playing that with eighth notes and cycling around those chords. But the, the interesting thing is happening on the B minor shape, there's a little bit of movement going on, and we're doing this. So we're starting off with that B minor shape, but then lifting the, the second finger to, to, to play that C sharp. So I'm needing to bar my first finger over two strings there, lifting up my second finger and then putting it down again. And then, I'm just allowing the open top string to ring. So I'm taking off my first finger entirely. So, sorry, like so. Um, and then we're going to the, the A triad. B minor, G. And then when we come back to this B minor, we do that little movement again. That's the rough idea. I actually think it's quite tricky to get this riff sounding exactly like the record. I, I certainly found it to, to be that way. There's quite quite a lot of little details which you have to get right. So um, first thing I think is a little bit of palm muting, um, just uh, resting my, my hand down here by, by the bridge. Uh, and it's also a question of just bringing out the right notes on top. So I think that's probably a question of right hand accents. And I think you're, you're accenting um, this, it's an eighth note rhythm, but you're accenting the, the beat. And then on, on the offbeat, um, it's a bit more muted. And uh, also on the beat, you're sort of bringing out that melody note on the top string, and yet you're not really playing that top string so much on the, on the off beats. So if, if, you, if you bring in that kind of accents and the palm muting, it should all start to, to come to life a little bit. We've got... Let's just turn up a little bit. Um... And 
Defender. The, the other interesting thing about this is the is the timing. I think this is one of those classic, quite deceptive intros to a song because you the, the song first comes in and it's it's a little bit hard to know where where the beat is, where the one is, um, and that's because we're coming in on beat three, I think, with this this B minor figure. That the count is one, two, three, and four, and one, two. just have to remember that you're coming in on beat three there. I think um, I, I had to kind of learn to hear that properly because I think that the ear naturally just wants to hear the first thing in the song as being the being the one when it, in this case it's it's not. So um, I think that's the introduction. The, well, the one final thing to point out I think is just the sound here and there's there's a really nice and prominent delay on this and uh, I think that really helps helps this part sound authentic. So I'm just using uh, my mini Ibanez delay pedal here and it's, it's a timed delay, it's roughly an eight note, eight note delay, it actually sounds a little bit fast. And I'm just playing there, playing there with the, the delay time control just till, till it's roughly an eighth note, one and two and three and four and one and two and three. And if you've got that delay then it, it kind of reinforces the, the rhythm of this part. And So that, that's really the first part of the, the introduction. Uh, I'm not sure how many times we do that. I think it's four, four or five times. Uh, and then we've got this. So it's a li little bit simpler now. We've really got an A chord. So just, just playing the, the open A string, maybe uh, that, that E at the second fret as well on the D string. And then we've got a little melody here, it's the third to the second to the open B string, then second fret on the G, then we're going to a, a G chord, I'm just playing the root, open D and G, and then that same uh, D, C sharp, B melody, then we're going to a D, I'm just playing the, the open D, and the, the octave there at the third fret on the B string. And I'm, I'm sliding from three to four on the D, playing the second fret on the G, and then the open D string again. And uh, I think that actually goes around twice. So back to the A. That's right. So we've got um, we've got A, G, D, A. Then we go around again. We play A one more time. G, D, and then we just hit an A power chord there just before the verse starts. So. On into the verse, and the, I think the delay is, is turned off for the verse. The, the verse is pretty straightforward. We're just kind of chugging away on some on some chords here. We've got a B minor chord at the in the second position to an A, and then we've got a D, and then a D sus four, and then back to D again. So a B minor. It's so again a little bit of palm muting on that that B B minor chord. You're not really playing all the strings there. It's just emphasising the, the lower notes in all of these chords, and then letting things open up with the the D and the D sus four. Now we come on to what I suppose is the pre-chorus to the song, and that goes like this. We've got. So 
something like that. Uh, actually quite hard to pick out some of the individual guitar parts on this song just because uh, there, there's quite a lot going on. It's, it's uh, at least double tracked if not uh, several more layers of guitar in there so it's quite hard to pick out some of the, the, the details here but um, roughly what's going on is, is this. Um, we're starting off on a, on a G chord and we're just arpeggiating that chord. Um, <laughs> And then going to an A, and then D, and the D sus4 back to D again. Um, yeah, whether you play an open G chord or an a, uh, open G and A chord, or, or use use bar chords, um, don't think it particularly matters here. Um, I'm just using bar chords here. Uh, then we do that again. So G. But the second time we go to a B minor, and then we're just going up, up to some further inversions of B minor. We start off with this bar chord, uh, and then we go to this B minor triad shape, that's the seventh fret um, across the top three strings, just going up through those strings, um, and then this to this B minor shape. Um, up at the 10th fret, this is just like a D, D minor shape, sort of moved higher up the neck. Um, and that's just a great way of creating a, a bit of a build when you're on the same chord, just, just kind of going through these inversions. So we, we start down here. Next inversion. Next inversion. And then we hit um, an A chord. And there's a little fill which goes something like that. We're hitting the... The, the low A string, then we've got, uh, we, I, I can think I can just about hear the fifth fret on the D string and then we're playing the fifth fret on the B and then going down to the fourth fret on the D, third fret on the, the B and then hitting the second fret on the D, second fret on the B. So it's, it's one of these kind of six runs. That then leads into the to the chorus. So that's the that's the pre-chorus. Uh, on the recording, you can sometimes hear these little little single note connections between the chords. Um, certainly, what one of the guitar parts is doing that. So, um, if you like, you can add add stuff like that in. So. write all of this out in the tab so if you want to get some of those details in there then you, you can do. Then we're on into the chorus and that's basically exactly the same as the introduction except we're starting on the A chord instead of on the B minor chord. So let me just play that through for you. We've got two, three, four. <laughs> just point out that the the second guitar on the the chorus is, is just kind of bashing out some some chords really so uh, the, the chords are a um, B minor G B minor so that's the the second guitar part on the chorus just two beats on each of those those chords that just leaves us with the solo then and I've literally just figured this out so I'm not particularly well rehearsed on this but I'm just going to try and sight read it through and hope for the best so here we go one two <laughs> Thank you. 
there we go. Um, uh, I'm just going to kind of quickly take you through this. Remember, I will be putting the music and the tab to this solo up on my site. So if you want to mull over the details of the, the solo, then I, I suggest you, you look there. But I'm just going to kind of quickly go through it now. I'm not going to describe every single note. I'll just kind of give you the general gist of it. Um, so I think we're, we're loosely in, in B minor here. So we've got um, in the second position, you've got your B minor pentatonic scale. Um, you've got your B minor scale, so you might want to be thinking in those terms when you're, you're learning this solo. So we, we've got a little lead into the solo which goes like this. I'm a little three to four on the A string. And then we're hitting the B note here. Just bending that E up to the E sharp on the B string. down to the A there. Then we've got a, a nice little um, semitone bend here at the second fret on the B string. Nice slow bend. Kind of coming down the scale there. this bending the E up to the F sharp. Um, then we're shifting um, up to the uh, up to the eighth fret here. And that's kind of the same, the same lick just moved up. And then we're up into the seventh position, kind of B minor pentatonic. Kind of a, th think of these as kind of Leonard Skinnerdish kind of pentatonic licks here, uh, and then the solo ends just with the uh, the, uh, the A G D stuff that we've got in the in the introduction. So um, if you find it helpful, maybe I can just run through the solo really really slowly, and um, those of you who want to um, learn this and play along, uh, you, you can do. So we've got uh, one. should point out if you listen to the recording it's, it's almost as if there are two guitar solos going on on at once I mean I, this, this is what seems to me to be the the, the most prominent part and the main guitar solo but there's also a, a, another guitar solo kind of going on simultaneously in the other speaker which is kind of doubling what's going on here but um, in some places is, is differing from that so uh, you, you might want to have a listen to that on the recording, but um, even I'm not nerdy enough to to want to transcribe both of those two, two solos completely note for note. So I've I've just gone with what I think is the the main and, and most prominent solo on the song. So for those of you gearheads who are interested in the stuff I use to get the sounds in this video, I'll just take you through that. The guitar is my Jazzmaster, which is um, an American, I think it's a '65 reissue or '65 vintage, something like that. But it's a it's a replica of a, of a 65 uh, Jazzmaster. And uh, amp-wise, I'm going into my uh, AC30 over here, 90s AC30, um, going into the, the, the normal channel top input. And then my pedal board here, into my mini pedal board. Uh, the, I mean, the tones on, on the recording are, are quite warm, just a little bit of drive, but not too much. So I'm using my, my Wampler Tumnus there. And as I've already discussed on the intro, I'm using a, a timed delay, kind of an eighth note delay. And for that, I'm using my Ibanez Analog Delay Mini. And there's just one other effect I was using. You can hear on the, the recording that for the pre-chorus section, there's a, 
a kind of modulation type sound. I'm not, not exactly sure what it is, but I just dragged out my old uh, Line 6 modulation modeler, which I still think is a great pedal. It's sort of fallen slightly out of fashion these days, but I, I still find it very useful. And uh, I'm just using a, uh, a, what am I using there? Like a rotary speaker, a kind of Leslie speaker emulation, just to try and get get the kind of sound that's happening on the pre-chorus. I don't think I quite nailed the sound there, but it's, it's, it gets reasonably close, I think. That's it for this lesson. I hope you enjoy learning to play this song. As usual, I'm gonna write out the music and tab to this song, and I'm gonna make that available in a free and probably illegal fashion up on my website, so you might like to check that out. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again next time. Bye-bye.